Hey, this is Jackie Hale. I'm here with Shane Darnell, and we want to explain how a show might utilize all of the various affiliation options available nowadays, understand who does what, and explain how Equine Sports Council fits into the puzzle to support, promote, and protect horse shows and exhibitors. Let's take the FASH Horse Show, for example. This will be held May 7th through the 10th at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. They expect to have about 350 horses and will use a three-judge system. This show has both Saddlebreds and Morgans, as well as Hackney's Roadsters and an open breed division. Stephanie Peterson is the show manager, and she has affiliated with the AMHA Star Program, which will qualify horses for the Morgan Grand National the ASHA Star Program, which will qualify horses for the Kentucky State Fair World's Championship Horse Show, the Monarch Series, which will qualify entries for the Monarch Championship, which will be held in October. And she has also joined the Equine Sports Council Network for governance, which includes rules, standards, and guidelines. Equine Sports Council is a nonprofit, non member organization that is providing rules, standards, guidelines, and support for grassroots horse shows. So, the benefits of going with Equine Sports Council for your governing body. Um, so, what you see here is a graph. It has inside the ring, which is supposed to represent the green oval, is supposed to represent what happens inside the ring. Um, this is a sports concept that's been developed for over 150 years by horsemen for generations. These are your class specifications, your judging standards. This is the way the class is run. Um, again, this cannot be copyrighted. These are sports concepts. These are the same regardless of governance affiliation. Another real-life example of a sports concept would be football, soccer, baseball. The regulations and the way those games are played are basically the same, regardless of whether it's a local-level game or a national competition. As it's the same with the way our classes are called and the way a show is judged, is the same regardless of your affiliation with any governing body. Shane? Now, outside the ring, this is where Equine Sports Council steps up to the plate and provides open shows that are not affiliated with any governing body additional protections. We have sport conduct rules and sportsmanship rules. We have officials' roles and responsibilities. We have horse and human welfare rules. We have uh, drug policies that are more advantageous to show horses. We have... Um, show requirements, uh, what, it, what it requires to uh, affiliate with Equine Sports Council. Shane, if I can interrupt you right there and just say as a show chairman that outside the ring is where you get into trouble without any written rules to enforce. And I just want to give people a couple of examples. So the conduct rules and sportsmanship, this would cover someone using an attention getting device in the warm up arena during a show or what guidelines a show should follow in the event of an accident or injury. The officials' roles and responsibility, this would be basic guidelines like requiring designated officials, having a farrier on the show grounds and a veterinarian on call, but also rules that address judges' prohibited conflicts of interest, the 90-day no transaction period, that kind of thing. Uh, welfare rules cover how a show would address the abusive treatment of a horse and outlines prohibited practices while on the show grounds. And definitions. This chapter seems simple enough, but it's probably one that show managers refer to most often. For example, what constitutes a professional, an amateur, a client? What is a novice or a limit horse or rider? This rule has gotten much more complicated lately with all the differences among the various breeds and divisions that impact the status of novice or limit. It's not practical for a horse show to print all of these variations in their prize list, so we have outlined those in our rules. Um, we also have dis a, an independent dispute resolution process by independent third-party hearing officers with the state of Virginia, Supreme Court. Uh, we assist shows in collecting debt. 
Um, we also give back marketing grants to horse shows. Um, once the show is over, the fees collected as part of the contract process with Equine Sports Council, we give 25% of those fees back to the shows and back to academy programs. We also provide a $6 million liability policy for all judges. Everything you see in the gold area happens outside the ring, and these are benefits the open shows do not have today. And we feel we offer a great product with great protections. So guys, the bottom line is if you don't have a rule book to refer to and a written rule to point to, you have no way to enforce anything. And if you try to, if your decision is challenged at an open show and you've got no one to back you up and no one to help you resolve the dispute, you're just on your own. So we feel like Equine Sports Council having these rules will bring structure and knowledge to grassroots shows, providing an opportunity for those new to the industry to compete and learn in a constructive environment, and will give experienced exhibitors the confidence that shows in the Equine Sports Council network will be well run. For more information, Check us out at equinesportscouncil.org. We'll hope you consider us.